So, um, I'm just going to go over um, quickly here. Each uh, um, villain team, their goals and what would have happened if they had uh, won. So we're going to go through all the generations quickly. Let's go. Generation 1, Team Rocket. Um, their goal was to capture Mewtwo using the Master Ball. So they say they get the Master Ball from Silphco. They, ca they find and capture Mewtwo, which I doubt they would have done. But let's just say they did and according to... Um, Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon, that's one possible timeline at least. Um, so they find the capture Mewtwo. Um, now this makes a split timeline here. We know in canon Pokemon can disobey their owners, uh, even to the point of going uh, destroying their Pokeballs. So Mewtwo could uh, just flat out refuse to obey Giovanni. Um, also, if you don't have enough gym badges, they can disobey you, but that's not really too big. Anyway, um, so not much would have changed. We just, Giovanni would just have Mewtwo, basically a weapon that wouldn't fire, basically. Um, uh, and then the, the opposite one that um, Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon seem to have taken, Mewtwo, um, you know, obeys Giovanni. Um, what would have happened then is crime, because uh, Team Rocket's goal was to make a lot of money and become rich, crime would have increased and Pokemon poaching would have increased because they would be using Mewtwo to steal money and Pokemon and they capture Pokemon and sell them on the black market. So crime would drastically increase uh, uh, due to that, but not the end of the world. Generation 2. Well, if Gen 1's Team Rocket would have succeeded, Gen 2's Team Rocket wouldn't even be around. But, say Gen 2's Team Rocket does succeed. Is the camera moving? Or the, I think the camera just... Anyway. Um, uh, so, uh, Team Rocket's uh, goals in Gen 2. Reform Team Rocket. Um, so, you know, they do that. Uh, they get Giovanni back. Um, but at this point, the Master Ball's already been taken, so... Uh, it would just basically be the reformer of Team Rocket and everything would go back to the way it was in Generation 1 but with no Mewtwo in the picture really unless they try to buy Mewtwo but no, I doubt that's going to go down well with Mewtwo yeah. anyway, um, Generation 3 we had Team Aqua and Team Magma if Team Aqua won, everybody would drown if Team Magma won, there would be no water well actually no, let me get more in depth in this if Team Aqua won then uh, most of the land mass would, would be gone, uh, at, at least most of it. So that would uh, cause even uh, um, more overpopulation, and with even less food to grow, Pokemon and human would, humans would be, cra would be grouped in together in one crapped environment with barely any food to eat. The only Pokemon that would even be able to prosper from this would be the water type Pokemon, but even then, debatably, because if water type Pokemon work the, work the same way as real life fish do, the water's mixing would kill them. So, nobody wins, basically. Um, Team Magma. They create land. Now, that would be by putting lava all over, you know, on, like, on top of it, at least on top of a lot of water. All that water would turn, a lot of that water would turn into water vapor go up into the sky, come back down, cause mass flooding. Like, not to the point where if Team Aqua won, but there would be a lot of misplaced water still. Um, uh, and uh, in, in Auras, it's basically confirmed that everybody just dies if they, if they win in Auras. Um, generation 4. Um... If, it, if Cyrus had won, then basically everybody and everything would have died and he would have reshaped the world in, you know, in his image. Even his team, his entire team would have gone and everything would just be null, void and grey. But that's pretty much impossible within the canon of the games because even if you have Dialga and Palkia, you still have Gar Giratina to deal with. And then Arceus would be there. Um... And he would just 
Yeah, he would just say, nah, mate. Nah. But, you know, if he found a way to get around to not only Giratina, but also Arceus, and every other legendary Pokemon that would probably come uh, to stop him, um, yeah, then he'd be able to recreate the world in his image. Uh, Gen 5. Uh, if, uh, um, what's his name again? N. If N won, you know, in black and white, um, then this would have major ramifications, even ignoring get gets this, so back, you know, stabbing him in the back. What would have happened is he would have separated humans and Pokemon. This would cause so much death and so much destruction. Right, so we have, there's a lot of Pokemon. Most of the Pokemon are, you know, kept in captivity. Uh, are either by choice or what, or like they're in the zoo or something. That means they don't really know how to hunt, forage for food, or survive at all, basically. So you're chucking them into an area where they're just gonna die. Like all the wild, all the already, already wild Pokemon will have plenty of food. I mean, they they'll be overjoyed. It's like oh, so much. food. Rude, like these stupid Pokemon, they don't even know how to, how to survive. It's just like, I can just go up and kill one of them and eat it. And yes, Pokemon have been, it is kind of that Pokemon do kill and eat all the Pokemon. So yeah, that's, it's, it's no good on most of, it's no good for most of the Pokemon in the world. And then you also have the fact that humans use, um, you know, feed some electric type Pokemon food. And then those electric types, Pokemon excess energy, get siphoned off to power stuff. So every power plant in the Pokemon world, pretty much, would just be dead and everywhere would have no power. So they'd have to reinstitute an entirely new power system, which would take years for uh, um, everywhere to get all their power back. Um, and then that would require them to re rely on like fossil fuels damaging the environment which is bad for Pokemon again um, and then you also have the fact that Getsus was gonna stab N in the back so Getsus would just be able to rule uh, would just like capture a bunch of the uh, stronger strongest Pokemon that had been released and then use them against the pe population who no longer have Pokemon to steal money food and everything so that just makes that's just an entirely app thing on top of that. And this is why I hate Gen 5 or well, Black and White's plot entirely. And it's, and it's why one of the reasons why they pretty much completely retconned it in Black and White 2. Well, not really retconned, but they basically just had to just chuck it all out and just... Um, yeah, no. It's, this is why it's so stupid, because even if it you know, N1 and gets a stick and stabbing him in the back. It would have, everything would have still gone to shit for both humans and Pokemon. Um, Gen 6. Um, now, this is actually one that uh, I can actually get more in depth into. Oh, well, wait, no, I forgot about Black and White 2. Black and White 2. Gets his wins, he gets money, he gets power. End of story. Pretty much. Like, it's no deeper than Gen 1's, pretty much. Um,. Gen 6. Now, here's the interesting thing. We have... we can't. I can't really give a concrete answer for this. Because I don't know exactly the exact amount, the number for how many uh, Team Flare grunts uh, and mem Team Flare members there were, and how many boys and girls there were, and same for Pokemon and different species of Pokemon. So... This is going to have to be a very rough guess of what would have happened. So, if... Uh, right, let, let's talk about the flare, flare, Team Flare members first. Um, it's usually agreed that if a species dips below 50, you know, population in a um, community, that species is most likely going to die out pretty soon. Like, in the next couple of generations. So, if Team Flare doesn't have 15 members and the human race is 
pretty much extinct, and I we can extend the same to Pokemon probably, but even but uh, that's a little bit more complicated, and I'll get to that in a minute. Um, uh, I think there is another statistic saying that humans could possibly survive within like a community of twenty five. I could be wrong, but it was like less. It was actually quite a bit less than fifty, and I would be like. It, I don't know if that's true or not, but let's say it's true for the sake of this argument. Then it'd be massive inbreeding, and the human race would still be completely and utterly fucked. Um, not to mention that, that everything would have been blown up, so they uh, and they, they have the, and I don't think there was anything in the games to say that they took any food or seeds or anything in there so they could grow food in the new world. I, they, we can presume they did that, but I don't think there was actually any and evidence to say that they did. Um, I don't know, I could be wrong, and I haven't played X and Y in a while. Um, but now to talk about um, the Pokemon side of things. Um, Pokemon, as we know, there's not just a male and female Pokemon, and that would just make this a lot different, not a lot simpler. Um, you also have different uh, types of Pokemon, so you have Fennekins. Chest pins and throw keys and all that in Generation 6. So you'd have to get at least 50 of each type of Pokemon within an evolutionary chain. So at least 50 of either Fennekin, uh, Baraxian, or Delphox, or um, Chest Pin, Chest uh, Nort, and whatever the middle stage is, and so on and so forth. Uh, and we Again, this is a bit hard to say because we don't have concrete numbers, but um, the um, we can presume they got a lot of Pokemon because they did have to basically steal a ton of Pokeballs from the Pokeball factory to catch all the, a lot of Pokemon. So we can presume they got at least a good amount. So that would probably preserve a handful of species from uh, Kalos. But then we also have the species that aren't in Kalos, so say Sinnoh, Johto, Hoenn, uh, Sinnoh, Unova, um, uh, the new one, I can't remember if it's the one in Sun and Moon or Sun and Moon, um, Alola, Alola. So, yeah, all of them that aren't in, um, that aren't in X or Y, they're all dead. Like, they're, they're just dead. Um, uh, so yeah, not a very good outcome, that. Um, Gen 7, we had Ultra Sun on the, Sun the Moon and Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon, um, the plot's very... Ve very slightly like um and these will be pretty easy to get through um is Lusamine wins in the sun and moon she captures a Nihiligo and some ultra beasts I don't know if um her going into the ultra dimension would cause more ultra wormholes causing more ultra beasts to be released but we can presume that would be a thing, so they would be there because it'd be Ultra Beast going around creating havoc, but essentially, um, she just gets to get her Ultra Beast. Not, nothing catastrophic, ca catastrophic happens. Um, Ultra Sun, Ultra Moon. Necrozma wins. He uh, eats the light from the sun and everything dies because uh, um, there's nothing there's uh, nothing to keep the planet warm, and it is an apocalypse. Yeah. So, that is what would happen if uh, the bad guys uh, from uh, Pokemon won. Uh, tell me what do you think, do you agree with my statements here, or do you think I'm missing something or whatever, and before anybody goes down in the comments and say um, for the um, X, X and Y one, um, that the Pokemon one is really hard. You only need like 50 Pokemon because like two Pokemon could make 50 eggs. But 
if we're going like that and then you know there's no real like um birth defects from it incest in the pokemon world well of course it's not going to be but um we're talking more like realistically here like if the well we're, we're injecting a little bit of realism into it here like this is what would happen realistically applying um what laws we have you know what happens in the real world you know, applying that to the Pokemon world as long as it doesn't contradict the Pokemon world. Um, and also for you saying, well, um, uh, the fact that um, you can't get nothing bad happens from inbreeding Pokemon in X and Y or any Pokemon game um, means that that contradicts uh, um, the thing and that, um, the, you know it's not guaranteed, uh, you know, it's not a guaranteed chance of if you're, if I like it, if you have incest and you, then that, it's not guaranteed that that baby will have a birth defect, it's only about 25% chance, which is actually the same percent chance of getting cancer from smoking. So, and there's thousands of smokers out there and I don't know how many of them don't get cancer, but you know, seventy-five percent of the time, you're not, you know, going to do as a encounter one. So, I don't know. You daft. I'm not a big man for. I'm not really good for statistics. Where you could just say that you just didn't get that twenty-five percent chance. Anyway, see you guys in the next video. Bye bye.